right guys welcome back to cool fred's garage so this cool fred here um this is the series where i'm working on the 1973 chevy impala um i'm in the convert i'm in the uh process of getting those uh the wheel wood rear disc brake conversion done but uh i'm also taking care of some other stuff while i'm 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 back in the back of the vehicle while i'm kind of in the area where the rear end is and the suspension stuff and all that so i'm doing multiple things while i'm back there so i can basically just you know just get everything back there i want to get knocked out knocked out and i don't have to go back and back in this area of the car for a while i can just move on to something else so um pretty much i've been up just been up working i haven't get, got a chance to get a lot of footage but i will let you guys know what i've done so far and and I'll probably just get a little bit of footage of some of the stuff um, as I go. So um, I talk about some of the things that I was gonna do in some of the other videos. So uh, the car is over here. It's out there. Nice, nice sunny Saturday. My camera's still adjusting because I'm inside and it's going from trying to figure out what I'm doing inside, which is a little darker in here in the garage than to the outside. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got going on here. So as you can see, I got a concoction of tools all over the place. Um, got the rear diff out. Got all this stuff, my measuring tools, my sealed driver tools and all that good stuff. But pretty much what I've done so far is uh, I just put the new pinion seal in there. So I had a pinion seal leak, but since I was back here getting the axles out and all this stuff, I mean, it just kind of made sense to just go ahead and uh, pull it apart and put the seal in the right way versus trying to, you know, just, um, cause you can blast the pinion nut loose and then you can just, you know, try to pop it out with a screwdriver and then try to put it in but you have to get something and be trying to go side to side so whereas in my case I got this seal driver kit so I can just put my new seal in and drive it in nice and flush so I got that in I'm cleaning up the yoke now so I can put it back together um, and let me see what I'm gonna do next so yeah, that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to put the yoke back on, get that back together, get the diff back in it. And then, um, so I gotta, I set, I gotta set my preload on the, uh, on the pinion nut, get that within range. And then I'm gonna put the, the carrier back in with the gear. So another thing I did is I moved the gas tank out of the vehicle so I can access that gives me a little bit more room under here, but I can get I can get the rear end stuff out without having to take the gas tank out. But I know eventually when I get ready to weld the tabs for the brake lines on this uh, on this rear axle housing, you know, what I'm saying you got to be careful about flammable stuff. So that's why I took the gas tank out. So that's out of there, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff back together. So that that right there is the old seal and the crush collar and a combination of just um, some diff fluid and some gasoline. That's in there. But basically, I'm cleaning this I'm cleaning this flange up. So I put a wire wheel on it and got it most of the way clean. I just got to get some sandpaper and go around this surface right here so it's nice and smooth so that the new seal uh, is able to seal up real good. So that's gonna fix my my pinion seal leak that I had. Um, so I mentioned that I rebuilt that differential. I put the limited slip and all that stuff in there back in 2016. So it's been holding up pretty good. Um, but I did, um, I did have to go back in it probably about three months later because I did have a whiny noise and I had to put a different shim on the pinion and stuff like that. But I didn't change the seal. So I'm not sure, um, and it, it really wasn't a bad leak. It was just a little drip or a little seepage like on the ground every now and again, but I don't want that leaking. So that's why I'm fixing it. So that's that. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and once I get that back together I can pretty much just um, if all my measurements and everything check out I can pretty much just start um, I can move on to the the control arm stuff I'm still debating whether I'm gonna take those springs out or not I'm not sure but we'll see all right so I use some some 223 m sandpaper basically this stuff right here and uh, that's what I use to clean this up so I got it nice and smooth so that should seal pretty good and I shouldn't have no more leaks so that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna put this on there um, get that on there and set my preload and uh, I'm gonna put a little gear oil around there uh, before I put it on just around this surface here so that's nice and smooth so I'm, I'm happy how that came out all right so I finally got the rear diff ah! No. Back together, got everything in spec. Go. I'm happy with my pattern right there. My backlash is good, Get and my pinion preload over there is good. So, uh, basically, I had to spend some extra time to get the, the pinion preload right. I'm going in with a new oh new crush collar, uh, just took some time with the impact just to get it perfect. So, after I got that perfect, um, getting this thing right here set back up. Uh, it I had to play around to get the backlash just right. Uh, so the backlash is supposed to be between six and ten thousands on these, and I'm right about six. And I checked my pattern, and uh, my pattern's good. So everything's good with the with the rear diff. Uh, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm pretty much gonna measure this out, and then I'm gonna prepare to wear that weld the tab on for the brake lines, and then we're gonna keep going forward. 